Snodgrass Malone coming at you here with a action figure review today um, of the Luke Skywalker Archive Series, the Black Series, X-Wing Pilot Luke. Um, a few years ago, this figure came out in the original run. Um, he was one of the first Black Series figures to debut, and I remember seeing pictures of him and thinking, wow, that's a great, really great looking figure. Um, definitely, you know, I'm definitely going to have to pick that up, and after several opportunities, I just kept passing him up for some reason. And then as, you know, as it would turn out, when we do that, what happens? You go back to the store and guess what, folks? It's gone. It's not there anymore. Um, so when I, you know, this past, I think it was this past summer at San Diego Comic-Con, I believe, they announced they were going to be doing an archive line and re-releasing some of their more sought-after figures. And in this line, I think you can also get a Bosque an IG-88 and a Boba Fett, and um, I've got the Bosk. I, pa I did pass on the IG-88 because I'm kind of waiting on figure arts to do something with that, but uh, didn't it didn't pass on this one, and uh, kind of uh, it took a lot to open this guy. It's you know, I mean, you'll see what I mean in a second, but uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty nice package. Uh, it's a blister card, um, black and white illustration of Luke on the front, and on the back, you know, that illustration is continued. You know a little bit about the product. You know, I um, mean, you know, maybe it's something. You know, we don't know what all this, all these legal, advertentia, whatever all this stuff is. You know, maybe uh, you know, telling you to team up with a bunch of uh, good old boys and go blow up the Death Star because you know the the dignitaries are gonna be uh, they're gonna be in the room. They're gonna be saying stuff like there's a weakness in the battle station and it can be exploited. But they're not the crazy bastards jumping in the starships. But you know, going back to um, to, to the to the 1970s, uh, well, late 70s, I believe, um, my first Star Wars figure by Kenner was Luke and his X-Wing pilot. And uh, it really, it kind of you know, kicked off this love affair with action figures at that age. You know, up until then, it was like all like metal trucks and tractors and, and things like that. And the you know, things that any North Carolina boy had in his toy collection, you know, late 70s, early 80s. You know, I had a couple superhero toys, but... Uh, you know, I came in late, you know, um, when I was old enough to desire Star Wars figures, by that time a lot of them had sold out and the stores were in the process of getting restocked. So the summer I bought the X-Wing Luke, the Empire Strikes Back came out. So this is a very important figure to me and I'm, I'm going to keep this one in the package and I opened this one. Because I wanted that, uh, I wanted this guy, you know, somewhere maybe displaying in my studio um, because I wanted just a wanted that trophy, you know, um, really kind of wish he was in the retro packaging, but, you know, looking at the original figure, and I don't know if you remember it, the, the paint apps on the face weren't quite as good, and I really like that. I mean, uh, this is, you know, as we're going to see in a few minutes as well, I think, you know, Hasbro is really stepping up here, and they're kind of look, taking a hard look at their self, and they're starting to get into figure arts territory um, as far as their paint apps and some of their applications. The figure is pretty standard. Hasbro, Black Series. I mean, it. Some of the posability does seem kind of stiff and ratchet. Um, you know, you can kind of hear it clicking, but I really don't mind that. I knew that getting into it. I definitely like the glossy black of the gloves here, and I don't know what these things are. I never, you know, I never bought those DK books that tell you what every part of the ship or the costume is for. But I, you know, that, I think this is a really nice shine on these metal maybe they're cartridges or whatever you got the strap hanging going in between the legs the helmet looks nice you know but it like it does take some effort to pose the guy um the head moves very well and that's a very great likeness of mark hamill a little heavy on the mascara maybe you know um let's see if he can kick his own butt here not quite you know and i mean you know, he does have an ab crunch that's good. You know, I, I'm not really, I didn't buy this figure for posability. Um, you know, I bought it because I missed out on it the first time. And I, and the, my first initial reaction when I saw the original Black Series Luke Skywalker in X-Wing Pilot was, you know, it's a really great looking figure. He comes with his blast tech, his helmet, and he also has his blue lightsaber, which you can, of course, detach the blade. And you've got this little opening right here which would enable you to hang it, if we can do it, on his belt. There we go. Kind of an odd placement for that. You know, it could 
you know, let's get our minds out of the gutter, but you know, yeah. But I don't re really remember him having his lightsaber on his belt in, when he had the black gloves and the New Hope in this version of the outfit. Um, so I really, you know, I don't even rem really remember him even holding a blast tech, but that's probably just a throwback to the 70s toy release. So let's uh, let's take a look at him with his helmet on, and you'll probably see, like I did, what's really my only gripe with this figure. Now, the helmet's a very flexible plastic, so I just kind of take my time working it over the face. And, uh, you know, it's kind of tough to get it all the way down here. And it's probably doing this just because I'm on camera right now. There we go. So you finally get it down. It fits pretty well. There we go. And you kind of have to apply some pressure to get it on here. And this is my biggest problem with this figure is the visor just looks kind of like frosted glass or hazy. It's still, I like the proportion of the helmet on the head because I think this helmet should look big and bulky. If you remember in the original trilogy films when it showed him running around, especially in the Empire Strikes Back, um, the helmet did look rather large. It's got great detailing on the helmet with the rebel symbols and all that stuff. Um, you know, maybe I just have it on wrong, but you, know, you can see the hair in the back, so that's kind of cool. And the back of the figure looks great, too. I mean, you got a lot of sculpted wrinkles and things like that. I like the difference in the pants legs coming down as far as their length on them because these car this cartridge belt that he's kind of wearing around this part of his leg is going to obviously push that up. So there's really nice attention to that detail you know the only real gripe i personally have with this figure is this visor but you know it still looks great it's still a great it's just a great looking figure and it scales really well with the bandai stuff um and i, I definitely like the gloss like a, once again the glossy black as juxtaposed to the orange color maybe it's because i'm a halloween fan <laughs> you know i mean i love those colors together so you know i got a NECA action figure stand that i'm trying to stand him on because the figure it is kind of tough to pose, so I'd say if you're going to display this guy, you know, I think these NECA action figure stands, I think they sell them in like packs of 10 at Big Bag Toy Store. They're not really super expensive, and they're, um, you know, if you're going to do a setup, you're going to, you don't want your figures falling out. But yeah, it's a very nice figure. Um, I definitely think that, uh, you know, if, you, if you've been waiting on this guy like I did, um, this is your chance. You know, go out and get him. Go out and get him before he is gone again. I'm probably going to go a little bit overboard and probably get multiple um, versions of this guy because, uh, you know, I just, I'm, I'm one of those people that when I screw up, I, I tend to overcompensate. So, you know, yeah. But let's get a little bit closer on him here. Now, this is where I'm going to compare him to the Bandai stuff because I want to really illustrate how I think that Hasbro is kind of stepping up to their game. Here is uh, the Bandai farm boy Luke from A New Hope. Um, now the Bandai stuff is it's definitely similar height. If you put him right on the stand next to it, he actually is just a smidgen, if that's a technical word, taller than the Hasbro. But uh, you know, the, the, the figure arts is much easier to pose. But just looking at the quality, you know, I'm, I'm A New Hope is my favorite Star Wars movie, so I'm, I'm always buying anything that comes out of that film, um, any memorabilia that is, uh, that is made as a part of that, that experience, I'm all for. So, you know, I'm, I'm all about the Bandai stuff. I'm really hoping that Hasbro, you know, maybe does a better version of their Han Solo from New Hope. And, um, you know, I just want to keep getting as much of that product as I can. So I think this really, this really shows that Hasbro is stepping up, especially in their paint apps. Um, you know, it could stand for better posability, but I mean, this guy is about half to sometimes even one third the price of this guy. So, you're, you know, if you can, if Hasbro can keep on stepping it up at this price point, that's a really great thing. And not that I would ever want to abandon Bandai, but you know, these guys, you know, they can they can escalate really quickly when they sell out or availability is questionable. Um, Okay, so let's uh, let's show it next to uh, the figure arts, the Bandai figure arts R2D2. So he scales really well with the figure arts product, and I mean, if he's going to go do that uh, Death Star trench run, he's got to have R2D2 with him. You know, Hasbro, hey, 
how about making an X-wing? You know, how about how about visiting that? You know, that would be really awesome. But anyway, um, he definitely scales with the figure art stuff extremely well and for the last comparison i kind of want to put the helmet back on him here one more time and i'm cringing because that rubber belt kind of in the front of it that goes over the chin is just like i'm i'm not wanting that to break there we go but yeah the helmet yeah you know, i guess maybe working it on and off a couple times will you know maybe break it in so to speak but i do like the helmet on i mean that's probably how i'm going to display him just because I want him to look like he's about to jump in the X-Wing. And to compare him next to another pilot action figure, here is the Space Battleship Yamoto Akira Yamamoto figure from the, uh, what's what we Americans call the Star Blazers cartoon, or the remake of that. So maybe I'm, I'm probably going to end up doing like a, a whole space pilot shelf. Um, and this is, you know, this is, a, this does... Kind of illustrate my main problem with Luke here is you see this girl when you see through her her helmet you can see clearly see her face so that just that slightly better grade of plastic right there really makes it pop now of course I think this this if we were to do a comparison video between these two figures I think the battleship Yamoto pilot would come out looking a little bit better than Skywalker does here but uh it's still I'm, I'm I know that there's a Rick Hunter coming out from Robotech and I'm hoping for maybe uh, you know maybe some of the Battlestar Galactica guys or, some, or maybe even a Buck Rogers. But I'd like to have all the you know the the pilots, the best pilots from uh, from all the fictional spaceships of my youth together on one shelf. That'd be a lot of fun to do. And I know that in, I've seen pictures of a uh, upcoming figure arts, and they're calling it. You know, um, I watched some some review shows where they're actually calling that figure the X-wing Luke, but it's not X-wing Luke. And it's more of a, you know, this being one twelfth scale, it's more of this. And hopefully I can fit this in the frame. It's going to be kind of tough. But here's the one twelfth scale. You know, I'm, I'm going to have to move the camera for this. Maybe we can get a better shot. But this standing behind him is the Sideshow one twelfth scale Luke Skywalker. And uh, that's the Snow Speeder. Look, you can tell the difference with the uh, pouch belt. The snow boots, the white, the white, whitish gray gloves, and he actually had a gun holster. Um, and the, and I think the figure arts version of the six scale sideshow, which is I don't know when that's coming out. They've just showed pictures recently. That'd be nice to kind of stand right next to this. And I'm I'm kind of glad that figure arts is not doing the uh, the the regular X wing Luke that they're going with snow speeder Luke because um, I really like I think Hasbro kind of earned their place on the shelf with this one. Um, it's a really great take on X-Wing Luke. Um, I haven't, I think I would say it's my favorite take on X-Wing Luke and I'm not even discluding that uh, Sideshow X-Wing Luke that they made a few years ago and I don't own that figure, mind you, but I did watch reviews of it and, and I went with the Snowspeeder version instead. Um, so that, to me, this was a groundbreaking figure and I, I would say in comparison to this figure, the Marvel Legends Spider-Man from back in 2001. Actually, it was. Let me correct myself there. This is the um, Spider-Man's classic Spider-Man from 2001. This was a groundbreaking figure back in its day because, you know, there had been a lot of Spider-Man figures up until that point, but you didn't. You really couldn't get them into Spidey-like poses, and this was one of the first figures that you could do that. It was. It was meant to be based. On the Todd McFarlane look, but I think it's more of a Salvus Bushima look, especially with the shape of the eyes and the head. But this figure, this Luke, really, in my mind, draws a lot of comparisons to this, because this led to the Marvel Legends line, and uh, and this, I don't know if this this line right here, if the Black Series was a reaction to what Figure Arts was doing or not, but. I can't, in my mind, it is. I don't know which came first. You know, it's one of those chicken or the egg kind of things. But this really was groundbreaking because this this figure led us into the Black Series. The Black Series blew up. And, of course, you know, we had that Constable whatever from The Force Awakens. It the, the, the line did have some figures that were, like, you know, questionable as far as quality and all that. But I think they're really finding their groove again. I think this figure is living proof of that. The, uh... The fact that they're upping their their paint app quality and they're kind of revisiting some of their past product 
while releasing new, really good looking new figures really makes me look at Hasbro and they're, they're taking it, I feel like they're taking it I mean, more seriously than they have in the past. So that's a good thing. So definitely, like I said, if you're, if you're a fan of Luke Skywalker, if you're a fan of New Hope, you know, guys, you know, you gotta, you gotta do, you gotta be like Luke, you know, when you pass by that Walmart, you gotta go in and you gotta go in full throttle, baby, because that's going to keep those scalpers off your back and you gotta grab this figure um, while it's out there. Hope you enjoyed the review and some of my crazy uh, eclectic points uh, and comparisons I made. I'm, I know I'm kind of all over the place, but still finding my voice here. But, uh, you know, like us, subscribe, and uh, we appreciate your view. And, of course, you know, comment and uh, let me know your thoughts on anything, the figure, the review, uh, how the weather is going, whatever. And if you have time today, do something nice for somebody and definitely do something positive for somebody. Take care. Peace.